I have been intermittent fasting now for about a week or so. Uh, it's mainly because I listened to the Rich Roll podcast, and he had Rich, uh, Ray Cronice on there, and he was talking about uh, intermittent fasting and uh, just how it really affects longevity, and not necessarily just how long you live, but it basically slows down the aging process so that you're prolonging the good years of your life, you know, you're not prolonging the old years of your life where you're like in a wheelchair or whatever and needing medicine and hopefully if you're in a healthy vegan diet with a healthy lifestyle, you probably won't get to that point. Uh, but combining those thing, two things together could even be more impactful. So um, I'm always looking to improve my health, um, improve the good years of my life. Uh, so that's what I have been doing last like week or so. Uh, my eating window I found that works well for my schedule uh, because I got out of work at like 11 p.m. every night. Um, uh, I found that like one p uh, eating from like 1 p.m. to like 9 p.m. Uh, works pretty well for me. So that's like an eight hour eating window. I'm still probably eating around the same amount of food uh, that I normally would. But I uh, just, you know, in that eating window. So like 16 hours of my day are fasted. Uh, it hasn't really been too difficult. <laughs> um, I know when I first started, I just pushed my eating window because uh, I would normally just, just wake up and eat. Or actually, <laughs> more accurately, accurately, what I would do is like I would wake up, be kind of hungry, but not quite hungry enough to eat. And I would like, have you ever been like hungry, but like you're too lazy to make food or too lazy to get up? Um, so you just sort of like wait around until your hunger gets like just too much and you're like, all right, now I have to eat. So that's what I would do. I'd like waste an hour lounging around and then I would eat and then I would like lounge around again for like another hour because I had to digest before I went to go work out and then I could go work out and then I would come back and eat again. And I just, I feel like now I, now that I've like pushed back my eating window to like 1 PM, uh, I can just wake up. Uh, all I really do is hydrate for like half an hour at least, and then I'll just go do my workout. Uh, you know, I don't have to lounge around for an hour, eat for like, I don't know, half an hour or something like that, and then wait another hour before I go work out. I can just go work out. And I feel like uh, for me, it it is more time efficient. It's a better use of my time uh, because I feel like I'm, I'm wasting less time. And when I do eat, like I'm eating, you know, I'm not like thinking about what I'm going to be eating, like because I've already had a couple hours to think about it. Um, it's it's uh, been pretty much nothing but positive for me so far. Uh, and like I said, I'm eating around the same amount of calories. I don't really track or anything. Um, but I, I feel pretty good. And like now my, um, my relationship with hunger is a little bit different because like when I used to be hungry, I would... I would, like, get the shakes, I wouldn't be able to think straight, I couldn't, like, I had to eat, or I couldn't do anything, and now, if I get kind of hungry, it's just, I don't know, it's sort of like, if a room is kind of cold, but not quite cold enough for you to change the thermostat, you just, you just, you feel it, but it's not so impactful that you have to do something about it immediately, um, and that's how I feel with hunger now, like, I, uh, I can actually go into a workout, uh, being kind of hungry, and then, you know, a little bit into my workout, I'm not hungry anymore, and, you know, that pretty much just has to do with the sympathetic versus parasympathetic nervous system, because you're going from uh, rest and digest to fight or flight, uh, and then after you're, you're all uh, done working out, then you're going back into the parasympathetic uh, nervous system, so then your, uh, your hunger comes back, uh, and uh, most of the time I work out during the day, like in the morning, and then I eat at like 1 p.m. So it's like a couple of hours normally between when I work out and when I eat. And actually, I think that that is pretty beneficial too because uh, insulin and human growth hormone work kind of antagonistically in the body. So like when there's more of one in the body, there's less of the other. So if you really want to manipulate your hormones positively for when you are trying to uh, build muscle or just like recover from workouts then you would actually want to have uh, a longer increase in human growth hormone um, after your workouts, like post-workout. You, you would want to have like a longer window where human growth hormone is being 
uh, release into the bloodstream, and then you'd want to have a bigger spike in insulin uh, later on when you do eat. And that's exactly what happens when you wait a couple hours after eating. And I know a lot of people think that you have to like slug a protein shake like five minutes after your workout or all those reps didn't count. Uh, but in reality, depending on how hard you worked out, your protein synthesis window could be open up for 48 plus hours even. If you don't work out too hard, it might be like 24 hours, but like basically you have one, two, maybe a day and a half or two and a half or maybe even three days if you like killed it. You have like two days typically to get in the protein that you need in order to recover. So you don't need to like be, you know, taking a protein shake right after you eat or anything. You can wait a couple hours and you'll, you might actually make even better gains. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's what, uh, my experience with intermittent fasting this past week has been like, um, I'm not hundred percent sure if I'm going to do it forever. Uh, right now it's working for me and it seems like I'll do it for a while. Uh, but, uh, we'll see.